Uh, Patel, welcome to the Cube. Great to see oh, you yeah, again. See you. Hey, Dave Vellante. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, remember, we did a podcast you. with Chris right. and uh, down in the downstairs conference room. Absolutely. Um, congratulations. Uh, welcome to the Cube. This Thank is you. our flagship telecast oh. where we go out to the the places where there's action happening. Obviously, here we're exclusive here with HP's uh, Moon Shot announcement. Uh, Chandra Khan, you are the guru. Now, your your official title is Senior Fellow Director, Sustainable Ecosystems Research Group. Right. But we know we've talked before. You you're a big part of it. This is my co-host Dave Vellante. Um, so you're pretty excited. I mean, this announcement is right in your wheelhouse. Absolutely. So just. Tell us, how do you feel about all this? I think this is a key stepping stone towards what we are trying to achieve in terms of using the IT ecosystem made up of billions of handheld devices, thousands of data centers, and digital print factories to deliver a net positive impact while making money for the company. So having this kind of infrastructure element enables us to use IT for resource management at large scales, at the scales of cities, which is a big opportunity. And it's also a big opportunity from a sustainability perspective. So when Prith Banerjee took over HP Labs, I think two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago, sometimes he got eight initiatives. I think it was about eight initiatives, Mm -hmm. I think. He wanted to solve big problems. We talked uh, two years ago around data center, energy, follow the sun, all the stuff that we talked about was really great conversations actually happening now. Um, One of the things HP has been criticized for as a company is, oh, the labs is amazing. They have Mm -hmm. great people in the labs. They just can't get products out the door. Right. This is actually not the case. This product announcement today was really an example of a very fast HP. Uh, absolutely. You have HP Labs, DNA. You have a division Correct. shipping a product. Right. Ecosystem. Right. Whole new generation. Sure. So talk about this shift. One, HP internally, right. how you feel about that and describe that. And then to talk about the second generation technology. Yeah, so first, uh, HP internal, as you said. If you see the way we have done our work, we've established thought leadership, advanced the state of the art. So when Prith took over, he emphasized that we need to be externally very visible to to show thought leadership and establish um, uh, and show how we have advanced the state of the art. But equally important or even more important was to deliver business impact. So the way we have gone about doing it is we have presented our thesis, shows how the thesis advanced the state of the art. Uh, you know, got collaboration from our peers externally, and then we have gone on to build demonstrators. So, you know, the uh, f- as an example, the area where I lead, we are building a demonstrator that shows the data center in which these systems will live, and the data center runs on its own supply-side microgrid, and we are driving towards a net-zero data center, what we consider the blueprint for the next-generation data center. Describe net-zero data center, write so, that down. So the, the way we describe it is as follows. Uh, we use available energy or exergy from second law of thermodynamics as our driving principle. So an available energy is energy that is useful. So if you take diesel as an example, 35 megajoules per kilogram. Once you burn that diesel, Jules. that availability is gone and it's gone forever. So we take a supply-side perspective. Given a pool of available resources, diesel, sun, wind, how would you locate your data center, particularly in geographies where grids are not available? How would you build your own power plant consisting of sun, wind, you know, uh, maybe non-renewable, and in some cases other base loads like manure, biogas? Use that microgrid. Use your data center with systems like the one we are announcing, and then Service SLAs that are emanating from all over. There are people who want their, would have service level agreements that require, uh, have an interactive service level agreement that requires immediate attention. Then there are people like our colleagues who do animation who want batch loads to be executed. They want it to be done in a given time. And then there are billions who have not boarded the IT bus, who want IT services, may not even have electricity at home. You know, they want IT services to better improve their life, like a vegetable vendor who can schedule, you know, get orders, pick the right vegetables. He doesn't have a fridge at home. He wants IT services, useful IT services. Man has no electricity at home. Do you think he can wait for the sun to come out? (laughs) So if you build a data center with a microgrid with multiple sources of power, you take all these service level agreements with a variety of workloads, then why can't you dynamically allocate them so that you shape the demand such that you are below the supply side curve. So if your supply side made up of sun, wind, and other sources gives you a given supply of energy, if you take all the demand coming in and you shape it and you are below the supply, you are net zero. 
that was a long explanation. Local Zero. farming <laughs> concepts brought to so the data center. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. local farming yeah. concepts. So what is your blueprint then for the, da- the sustainable data center? Is it, is it that? Is it more comprehensive? The, it's it's uh, quite comprehensive. It's, it's a holistic perspective. So the blueprint, like we said, is built on a technical framework on available energy. First principle, exploit local sources of available energy in, in the line of being more comprehensive. Second, examine waste Available en- energy in waste, waste stream. So when I'm driving by a sugarcane plant in my village near India, I see flue gases coming out at 500 degrees Celsius. One joule has 0.5 joules that's available. Mm-hmm. You can harvest that av- an available energy. That's the second principle from a supply side. Yet another principle is take the life cycle energy used, available energy used across the life cycle to dematerialize our data center, minimize the amount of material used in the data center. So energy used in extraction, manufacturing, operation, reclamation. So we build tools for that. So on the supply side, the principle is use local sources of available energy, use availability in waste streams, do life cycle energy management. On the demand side, give you what you want, when you want it, no more, no less. So given this pool of available energy, how do we broker your, the service level agreements? How do we allocate? In that context, we have developed control systems that dynamically schedule cooling, power, and IT. So use virtualization to move workloads around, adjust the air conditioners based on temperature sense in the data center, and adjust the power loads. So this comprehensive view of what we call end-to-end design and end-to-end management is the blueprint. Of and, the future, and data so center. the devices they announced today, obviously, is the products that fit into that. But um, there's other elements like software, right. probes, and things like that. That all fits under the blueprint. Absolutely, under end-to-end management blueprint. So if you think of uh, having these devices, so the devices we announce have flexibility in them that we can exploit with a, a layer that is a knowledge discovery or analytics layer that aggregates all the data to schedule things internally. Then there is a control loop. All these are from a management perspective, the software that run on top. So, you know, you guys are at HP Labs. You're always inventing the future at HP. And the hot thing in the market today is big data, mm-hmm. analytics, real-time analytics. Sure. This is not new to you. No. So how do you see all this playing out uh, with big data and analytics? Fundamentally instrumental to the design of the data center because you need to have sure. those analytics. Mm-hmm. What's your view of big data and, and the possibilities? So a lot of, you will hear a lot of, from my view, is very resource management centric. So you will hear a lot of viewpoints on using big data to look at consumer patterns and consumer buying patterns. Those are all well and good. My view is, is, is an era that we have just started working on built on this IT ecosystem and the data centers. There's a huge opportunity to mine structured and unstructured data from physical systems. So under the manhole covers, in the pumps, in the compressors, in the highways, so what we see a big opportunity with big data happens to be management of resources, physical resources, power, water, waste, at the scales of cities, at the kilometer scale. So imagine San Francisco of tomorrow where we are getting data from that pig in a pipe that is traversing a pipe to see if there are cracks in the pipe. Imagine the data that's created with that. Petabytes, zettabytes. And, and imagine the usefulness you deliver with that. So clearly we see a huge opportunity. So you actually instrumenting those industries? So what we have started is in, as the, the need arises, for example, in this building, we have instrumented the building. Mm-hmm. So we are gathering the data to do anomaly detections, to, to see when things are working inefficiently, how to make them run efficiently. Those kinds of feelers have started, and cities are starting to look at using these kinds of approaches using IT. Yeah, so we've had Dave Donatelli on before. He's talked about sea of sensors. Correct. Right, so this is what we're talking about. Here. The sea of sensors that Dave was talking about is the sensors we use in the systems, okay. in the data center to dynamically manage resources in the data center. Now take those sensors and scale them up kilometer scale. Mm. Or for matter, not only sensors. Already if you look at a city, right, and somebody doing maintenance in a city, they're creating all kind of unstructured text in notes they take, there is all these devices like compressors and pumps that are already, shall we say, tweeting their state. <laughs> so if what I'm saying is let's harness the tweets of the physical systems, mm-hmm. right? Let's, uh, let's use IT to manage and say, Mr. Pump, how are you doing today? We don't have any more money to build, buy a new more pump. We don't have money to build infrastructure. By golly, we're going to make the infrastructure last longer given the economic uh, uh, crunch we have, and then there are other parts of the world that are saying, we are building new cities, help us build it. 
So in the evolution, was, this is a fantastic conversation. Love this and talk for an hour. But, you know, we now have this how the Internet of Things. We have mobility. We have wireless. Right. You have different types of wireless sure. networks. Sure. What areas do you see that are fascinating right now to you around expanding this thesis to, to being not just demonstrations but actual deployments? Is it wireless? Is it mobility? Because now you have mobility. You can actually have someone capturing sure. Uh, a, an iPad and not even have to go to the pump. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then only going when it's efficient. Right, right. So is it the wireless? Is it the mobile? Is it the cloud? All of the above? Is it a confluence of everything? Uh, so you, you hit the nail right on the head. Internet of Things, cyber physical infrastructure is you know in, increasingly what we have today. And it's all of the above. I can't believe, and by the way, it won't be an iPad, it will be an HP laptop with, dyna, you know, with the ability to do computation. So, you know, I feel that in this whole world where we have gone to all these devices, we have become very much centric on consumer type apps. I am from the generation that does finite element analysis, CAD design. My laptop is a workstation. So, I, an HP 1000 used to manage industry, you know, industrial yeah, processes, yeah. right? <laughs> I think that we are going back to an era where uh, laptops will go back to what they used to do best. They manage buildings and resources. Because a lot of things need to be done in real time. Yeah, it's, so if you it's a mini-computer mainframe in your hand. Exactly. And, and so my feeling is, if you're managing a factory, like a pharmaceutical, do you have time to take the data, send it someplace, analyze it? You need to do real-time close the loop. And you infrequently dump to the cloud to do analytics of historical data. So what I feel will happen is real-time control mm -hmm. will happen with... Uh, with a laptop workstation or a handheld device, and historical analysis will occur via cloud, and the handheld device will also be a sensor. What are the implications of that for software quality? I mean, we've got you know, <laughs> dozens or sometimes hundreds of microprocessors in our vehicles, yes, our buildings, yes, yes. And, and, and if I have to reboot my uh, system uh, every other day. The complexity issue, yeah, really. Exactly. The complexity is yeah. amazing. I think so, we, it's a very good question, and I suggest we go back to old school engineering. So when I worked on disk drives, <laughs> we used to be very cognizant of the kind of stuff we put out, right? It was not like, okay, we'll beta test it on a bunch of people. When you are just doing some things that are not going to shut down your city, electricity, then it was, it is So fun. the Google car that's in beta is not a good car. Well, that's it's a great start. On 101. No, you know? it's, it's, a, it's a great start. I mean, that's a great but start. you're saying good enough is good. not good enough. Well, don't you, test you, it on people. Uh, so yeah. what you would do is you, you start with that, and that's a great step forward, right, in, in showing an, uh, an example. Then you go ahead and test it out like we always did when we did physical industries of the type we did and where HP 1000 was used to manage power plants, right? Yeah. We are going to have to do that yeah. so that, you know, what recently that incident in Yuma caused entire San Diego to go blackout, yeah. right? So when IT will manage cyber physical systems, IT tools and software need to be very robust. And we need to go back to old school design and engineering. So let me ask you just kind of more of a kind of come out of the HP labs, put your, you know, HP employee, industry person hat on. Mm -hmm. This announcement today. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk about it I mean, from your standpoint. What's the most important thing for folks to take away from this announcement about the server technology that they're announcing with, with um, the ARM technology and the power for the data center? Cause uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry. I get excited and okay. to. Uh, so, oh, wait, no, so, so you're say, what you're asking is, the way I see it is you must take this announcement in the holistic framework that is HP, right? We are not announcing when, when, so you are talking to me, yet the people who have done all the work are some other people who will be talking to Partha soon, recently. But when that's you look at... That's his baby. That's his baby. Yeah. So, but yeah. when you look at, so Partha will be talking after this, but if you look at it, we work with, you know, we all work together in not only designing a, an efficient server, but how does the server serve as a flexible building blocks so it goes into the data center, and that it can be managed in the data center efficiently, dynamically, so that we build the net zero data center. And how do we use the net zero data center to manage cities? So the, the key takeaway for people is that HP is rich with mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, computer scientists, economics, who work together in a multidisciplinary fashion to create a building block that becomes a solution of tomorrow. So it enables a solution of tomorrow. And without the building block, we don't get the differentiation. So you see this as a differentiation for building unique cloud services that we are used to and new cloud services of the type I described that will manage resources at the scale of cities. Okay, Chandra Khan, thanks so much for coming in the Cube. Great Thank to you. see you. Loved it. Chandra Khan yeah, Patel, always, uh, uh, guru here time. at HP Labs, runs the research group here about sustainability. 
And uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate Thank it. You, Great Richard. to see Thank you, you again. Thank you.